In the intricate world of formal verification, abstractions are not just helpful, they are essential. They are the silent heroes that transform a complex design into something far more manageable. Imagine a maze with multiple entry points. You want to see if you constructed your maze correctly. You are letting 20 rats enter the maze from all possible ports. You let them run around the maze to see if eventually all the rats are coming out or not. How easy is it going to be? With 20 rats and tracking all possible paths, it's going to be really difficult. What if you could solve the puzzle with just one imaginary rat who can arbitrarily enter the maze from any entrance and still check the correctness of all paths in the maze? That's abstraction for you. Memories are also similar to this maze. You can write into n address locations and read from all of them. If you let all possibilities in your formal runs, the complexity is going to explode. Imagine taking a vast memory system and distilling it down to its essence, where tracking a single location or just a few of them unravels the complexity of the whole. That is the power of abstraction. And that's exactly what I'm here to help you with. I'm your guide on this journey through the nuances of formal verification. So if you are a VLSA engineer looking to sharpen your skills and navigate the complexities of formal verification, you are in the right place. Join me on my YouTube channel, Formal Intelligence, and let's tackle formal verification together one step at a time. Hit that subscribe button and let's get started on this journey to mastery. With this video, we will complete all basic and intermediate techniques for formal complexity reduction. If you have watched all the videos so far, you are in a really good position to start implementing these techniques in your formal ventures. I encourage you to try them out and discuss any issues that you might come across. Memory abstraction is a way of tracking only one or a few locations in the memory, irrespective of the number of locations in the original memory. We will discuss a case where we will track only one location and not three or four locations, which is also another possibility for abstraction. One simple way to do this is to create a file with the abstracted memory model and use it in your formal runs and ignore the RTL memory altogether. So are there any problems with these kind of abstractions? Yes. So if you don't model the locations other than the ones which you are tracking, you will see false failures in your property if the property relies on data from untracked locations. That's one. So is there any other issue? There is another issue with timing. So if your memory has a specific read or write latency, let's say one clock or two clocks, then your abstraction should also make sure that you maintain that latency in your model. Let's look at an example. Here's a memory with n locations with multi-bit data input address and single bit read and write control signals. And this is the data out from this. Let's see if we can abstract this memory and track just one out of these n locations. This is how you can abstract it. The code is as shown here. The strategy is to define an internal signal called track mem that can store only one data. Track mem will have the size of data in, the width of the data in, just for just one data. The first red arrow right here shows how the data is stored, the data data in is stored in the tracker mem, track mem when the address is equal to symbolic address for a write. And this section shows the read operation. In this read, if the address is equal to symbolic address, then the data out will be the tracked data, track mem. But what happens to all the other cases, all the other reads where address is not equal to symbolic address? In this abstraction, we don't care about them. But do we tie them to zero? No, we just want to let it take any value. So the key thing about abstraction is that you abstract only what's essential. So you just want, you want to introduce as minimum over constraints as possible informal. And the strategy is you constrain something, you let everything else take any value. If you see a failure, then you add constraints on the other free running signals. That's usually how we do, do things informal. Q's time. 
can you think of some answers for these questions? You can pause the video and see if you can answer them. Will the abstraction work if the memory read latency is two clock? The current code which I show, which I shown in the previous slide, this will not work because there is just one latency. So if you send a read and in the next clock cycle, you're getting, going to get the data. But if there is a memory in RTL, which is just saying that you need to get the data only after two clock cycle, you need to modify this to ensure that the timing is obeyed. And will the abstraction check for all addresses or will it check just the address two, which is a symbolic address here? So the thing with symbolic address is that it's free to choose any value as long as you very add some over constraints on that. So in this case, it is going to take all the values one to n, but in a single formal run, it will take only single value. So it doesn't mean that it's not going to cover other cases. So it is going to cover other, other addresses as well. In fact, all the addresses. So the answer is yes. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and never miss an update. Stay tuned for our next video where we will cover another fun formal verification topic. Until then, bye. Take care.